I'm gonna show you how to paint this beach scene in six steps. Let's get started. I'm just masking out some of these small white areas with masking fluid and then allow the masking fluid to dry naturally. I've got some cerulean in the middle and I have a little bit of phthalo blue, cerulean and Payne's grey. So it's kind of a little bit more of a grey blue. Just adding a pinch more of that cerulean now. Always mix up plenty of paint. And I'm also using buff titanium and a pinch of raw sienna. Now, if you don't have buff titanium, don't worry. You can use raw sienna diluted on its own or even yellow ochre. So I'm wetting the sky with a large, flat, soft head brush. I'm loading my brush with plenty of the buff titanium and raw sienna on the horizon area, painting it wet into wet. I've rinsed my brush, I'm loading my brush and I'm just swishing that cerulean into that buff titanium and yellow ochre, allowing them to mix and blend on the paper by tilting, as you can see here. Now I'm applying with my large size 12 brush, the phthalo blue, Payne's grey and cerulean. So it's a little bit more of a grey colour and I'm tilting. I'm wetting the sand area with a large soft haired brush. I'm painting the raw sienna and buff titanium mix, wet into wet. I've added a little bit more of the raw sienna there and a little bit of that grey blue colour. And you can see it's a lovely sort of earthy, sandy colour. I'm painting it damp into wet with my flat one inch brush, painting along the shoreline as well. So this sort of a deeper, sort of stronger tonal value here as well. Adding a little bit more of that gray blue. That was the phthalo blue, cerulean and Payne's gray mix. And now I'm tilting, allowing the paint to run down to create some lovely atmospheric effects. And I'm spattering as well the raw sienna buff titanium with that grey blue. In the foreground area, still tilting and using my brush just to pull down some of those marks to make them look more natural. Adding a little bit of the grey blue mix, added it to the raw sienna and buff titanium. I'm just painting along the sort of shoreline there. I've mixed up a little bit more of the raw sienna and I've got a pinch of that grey blue. I'm spritzing some of those marks just to kind of break them up a little bit. I kind of want the foreground to be almost kind of semi-abstract and I'm spritzing there on the right hand side just to get everything moving and flowing. And I'm just using my one inch flat brush to apply the buff titanium with the raw sienna in the foreground, wet into wet. I'm sprinkling some table salt onto the sand now, just here and there, mostly in the foreground. I'm mixing up some of the cerulean now into the raw sienna and buff titanium. And I'm painting the sea area wet on dry with my size six round brush. And I'm going to allow the painting to dry naturally to allow the salt to work. And I'm just brushing off the salt now, as you can see, there's some lovely light textures. So I've started off with some yellow and a pinch of the cerulean. I'm painting wet on dry with my size 10 brush. I'm just going to really simplify this. I don't want to go into too much detail here. It's almost like a diagonal sort of shape here pointing to that house. I'm just adding some raw sienna just underneath there, wet on dry, but pushing it into the wet wash with my size 10 brush. Mixing up buff titanium with the cerulean and just painting it at the bottom of the bushes, but also on this sandy area here, this sandy bank, painting damp into damp with my size 10 brush, just some darker marks here in the bushes. Adding some ultramarine to that wash now, just to make it a little bit darker, painting damp into damp. I'm mixing up some burnt sienna and this is going to be for the rocks wet on dry with my size 10 round brush. I've mixed up some ultramarine on its own and I'm dropping it in wet in wet into the burnt sienna so they're mixing on the paper. Mixing up a dilute ultramarine burnt sienna 
So it's a mid brown painting, damp into damp on the left here and wet on dry on the right hand side beneath the shoreline. Use my spritz bottle just to soften and let it all run down to make it look sort of more atmospheric doing the same on the left hand side but also spritzing the bottom of the rocks to allow that colour to drop down. Mix up some more ultramarine in the burnt sienna so it's a blue grey colour painting damp into wet there on the right hand side. I'm using the plastic card to sort of swipe off the damp paint so make sure the paint is damp and not too wet. So I'm just sort of lifting off one swipe and move on. Don't go over and over the same spot because you could actually tear the paper. Spattering wet into damp on the shoreline on the right hand side. I'm mixing up a blue grey here and just painting it on the windows above, wet on dry with my size 8 brush. Swap to my size 4 brush now, painting the rooftop, wet on dry and just painting the sort of brickwork of the house there and rooftops of the other small buildings using a mixture of the ultramarine mixed with the burnt sienna but also the burnt sienna on its own or a pinch of ultramarine painting some of the darks around the windows wet on dry and then adding darks in the actual windows themselves wet on dry so I'm painting a very dilute raw sienna mixed with buff titanium there wet on dry and now I've mixed up a little bit of ultramarine in with that color and I'm just painting this on top so make it small as well and I'm using my size 4 round brush and I'm painting the sea now wet on dry with my size 4 brush using my paper towel to control the amount of moisture on my brush there and I think it's a good idea now to allow the painting to dry I'm painting wet on dry now the darks underneath the eaves on the building here using my size 8 round brush painting some sort of darks and details in the windows as well varying the marks painting wet on dry with my size 8 brush the darks in the windows and a little bit of darks underneath the rocks as well adding some burnt sienna and Payne's grey on the rooftop there I'm just adding a little bit of darks and details now to the buildings on the right hand side, wet on dry. So just a few more darks here and there to finish this stage and I'm going to allow my painting to dry once more. So I'm using my size four round brush and I'm painting the people using ultramarine and burnt sienna, painting wet on dry. So I've got very small heads, arched kind of windows for the bodies and legs, literally two sticks coming down from that arch window wet on dry. I will put a link for a tutorial I published all about painting little people in the description below. I'm just painting a little bit of shadow now to ground the people. I'm giving the man or woman a lead and I also thought it'd be quite nice to have a little dog here. Adding some more darks underneath the eaves here with my size 4 brush, wet on dry. You could use a mixture of the ultramarine and burnt sienna. Doing the same on the sort of story below. Painting the flagpole wet on dry with that ultramarine and burnt sienna wash. I'm using Windsor Red to paint the flag. You can use any colour you like. I'm spattering here on the left to create textures and details using a mixture of the ultramarine burnt sienna about 50-50. A few of those spatters escaped into the sky so I'm making them into the little birds here using my size 4 round brush. I'm using a toothbrush, an old toothbrush, I'm sort of loading it and I am using my index finger to sort of swipe the top of the toothbrush or the, the brush hairs to the bottom so you get this lovely fine mist and you can vary the colours as well. I've added some more burnt sienna and ultramarine, it's a darker colour and I'm sort of flicking the brush to get some bigger dots there especially in the foreground on the left hand side. I'm going to allow my painting to dry. And for step six, the final stage is I'm removing the masking fluid. I'm going to finish off the details on the buildings, spatter a little bit more on the sand and the rocks, and I'm going to paint some highlights on the people. So I'm spattering a little bit of raw sienna here with my toothbrush in the foreground, wet on dry, and just tidying up the windows using ultramarine and burnt sienna with my size four round brush, wet on dry, just a few little darks and details just to really bring this building to life. And I'm adding some white gouache to the right hand side of the people just to sort of really pull them away from the sea area there to make them look more 3D using the tip of my size four round brush. 
and I'm using some white gouache just to spatter the shoreline there to create a little bit of sparkle as well and I'm also spattering the sand area wet on dry. I've decided to use a paper towel just to protect the sky. As you can see, my hand has got very messy and I'm just spattering the rocks here with the white mixed with a little bit of buff titanium. You could use raw sienna. I've removed the washi tape to reveal a lovely white border and it does give me time to assess to see if I need to do any more to my painting. And I felt that I needed a little bit more white on the windows there just to shape them better here and there. So I'm just using my size four brush with white gouache, wet on dry, just to tidy up the sort of window panes, etc., and add some more lights and details. I felt the bird here on the left hand side was too big and too distracting so I'm lifting it off with my stencil brush and because it's ultramarine and burnt sienna they lift off quite nicely and I've made it look like a cloud there. So here is the finished painting. I really hope you enjoyed this step-by-step -step tutorial. And if you'd like to support the content that I create here on YouTube, why not think about joining my Patreon membership? You will get access to my weekly exclusive tutorials and downloadable line drawings, and you can cancel anytime. Details about the membership can be found in the description below. Just click more. Thank you so much for watching. Happy painting. Bye for now.